Good day, fellow investors. Today we'll discuss the Chinese One Road, One Belt infrastructure project that's totally under the radar in the Western world, but has huge importance for how will the economic world look like in the next 10, 20, 50 years. Before starting, let me just show you a piece of history. Up to 1820, the biggest global economy was China. The second economy was India, and only then came Europe. Colonization, wars, whatever, India and China really fell, but now they are growing again. And China went from just a few percentage points of global GDP in the 1980s to a 20% level now, and is expected to grow even faster in the future. Chinese growth is still close to 7% and doesn't show any signs of stopping. So what is the One Belt One Road project? It is an infrastructure project that aims at connecting 70 countries that hold more than 66% of the global population through increased infrastructure investments into railroads, airports, seaports, lowering tariffs, lowering traveling barriers, lowering business barriers, and all the important things that lead to economic sustainable growth, business integration, and China understands that protectionism is not the way the world will develop in the future. As China will become the greatest global economy, India will be the second largest economy, it's very important to follow what they are doing. Two routes, one is to rebuild the 2000 year old silk route and the second one is to develop ports that allow for a faster shipping of Chinese imports and exports in order to of course increase economic activity and continue with the sustainable development. Now you might not grasp the importance of what's going on but just let me give you an example. The Chinese Prime Minister was recently in Serbia which is a country in Europe and they have reached deals where the Chinese will invest almost 4 billion euros in the country. Such things will cement Chinese position in Serbia and in all the other 70 countries where China is spreading its influence. Lower its dependence on the US, Europe is still somewhere there, so the Silk Road is expected to go into Europe, so it, Europe will also benefit, but Asia will benefit the most. Russia, we have made a video on Russia, and all those countries that are related, also Serbia, metal production, everything that can develop. So it's something that's off the radar, nobody's thinking about it, everybody's thinking about the tax benefits that Trump is going to do or things like that. Those are all short term. This is the long term trend that if you really want to get rich, if you really want to lower your risk, you should follow. How to invest? Well, we have discussed already lots of companies that are exposed to China, India and similar trends. However, if you don't like foreign stocks, you can also invest in domestic stocks that are exposed to that trend. Just think of Starbucks. It's a company, we all know what they are doing, perhaps many of you enjoy the, the coffee, but what is going on in China? What are they building? Railroads, airports, seaports, human travel, business travel. What goes well along that projects? Starbucks cafes and those are exploding in China. So you can also invest in domestic companies and take advantage of what's going on. It's up to you. What's also very interesting is that Chinese consumer increasingly desire premium products. So as the economies are developing there, the demand for premium products for higher quality brands, Nikes, Starbucks and all those kind of brands is really growing. I hope I have made you notice what's going on in Asia. This is just a small part of the huge development that's going on there. And the world economics are shifting from the developed world that we call developed world to Asia. In the developed world, monetary policies cannot get the economies to grow f at a faster rate than 2%. There is no inflation because the competition is too strong in Asia. So if you're smart, expose yourself to Asia, expose your portfolio, take adv advantage of what's going on.
this is what we know. The short-term fluctuations, we can take advantage of that. Another positive, valuations in Asia are much cheaper than in the developed world. So think about it. I'm looking forward to your comments. Click like if you like the content. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.